All right, welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the different uh, strategies for answering the TOEFL factual information and detail questions. Today, we are going to, well, maybe it's the same day, but in this video lesson, we are going to talk about the tricks and the traps. That's why we have wonderful Admiral Akbar here with us from Star Wars. So, first of all, the tricks and the traps of the factual information and detail questions. I'm not going to read the entire page for you. There's really not much to read. It's pretty straightforward. But if you're watching this video, you should have already read it yourself. Um, now, we have it laid out in the reading passage, in the question stem, and the answer choices. So, the first part in the reading passage, complex sentence structure. Now, this is not necessarily a trick or a trap of the TOEFL, but it's definitely something that could cause you problems. That's why in the very beginning of the uh, of the course, when we went through the different things about what's required for the course and the presumptions for uh, for this course, uh, one of the most important ones is that you have a high enough level of English. If you're this far in the in in this course, then you you probably have already gotten past that part. But it is important. So just to give a quick example. Um, some forms of uh, complex sentences. Now, here's a little secret about TOEFL excellence. I actually make the examples that we have in this course a little bit harder than the actual TOEFL exam, as much as I can. I don't want to make it easy for you, and then you get there and realize that it's much harder, and then you're like, what the heck, I wasn't prepared. Then I wouldn't be doing my job correctly, and uh, and then you'll be mad at me. And that's not a trap that I want to fall into. So I try to make them a little bit more difficult than you'll experience on the TOEFL exam. That way, if you can get through this course, then you can definitely get through the TOEFL exam. So back to complex sentence structure. His reports inspired the French government, already an established presence in the region, to begin a systematic study of the ruins. Okay, if, uh, well, this is what we call a non-defining clause that's separated by two commas. It's, in other words, it's not necessary information f to, to the sentence. You could take it out and the sentence would still make sense. Um, so one way that you can comprehend sentence structures like this is just eliminate that. Skip from the first clause to the last one. He, his reports inspired the French to begin a systematic study of the ruins. The French had already established a presence in the region. So basically, they're just taking two simple sentences um, and adding it together to make a complex sentence. So if you're not familiar with that part, it could be difficult for uh, comprehension, and that would actually cause you to lose time. That's why I, I included comprehension of the different sentence structures into the tricks and traps, even though it's not necessarily a trick or a trap, but it is something that could cause you problems. Um, also, let's see here. There was a good one in here. Um, Klimt died in Vienna on February 6, 1918, having suffered a stroke and pneumonia due to world, worldwide influenza epidemic of that year. So here we have the effect first and the cause second. So this is a, a classic example of a complex uh, sentence structure is by having the, you know, the effect first and the cause um, after. So that could cause you to, when you're looking for um, the answer choices, excuse me, when you're looking for the answer choices, maybe there's a keyword in the second half and you read that and realize that you have to go back to the beginning and read the whole thing. That's why when you do find the, uh, the location of the answer, or at least what you think is the location, don't just read from the place where the keyword is. Go back to the beginning of the sentence and read the whole thing. So complex sentence structure is something which is not necessarily a trick or a trap, but if you're not familiar with it, it's something which could cause you to lose time. Advanced vocabulary. Now, I put the word advanced in quotation marks because I don't really believe there's such a thing as advanced vocabulary. You could say that there is advanced grammar, um, you know, beginner or intermediate or advanced as far as um, things like grammar, because, of course, you know, beginner, you have to start out with the alphabet and sentence, um, you know, basic sentence structure and move up from there. But as far as vocabulary, if you know the definition of a, a word, it doesn't matter if the word is two, two letters long, like the word it, or um, a word that has five syllables, as long as you understand what the word means. The part that might be advanced would be spelling the word and pronouncing the word. But as far as comprehension of the word, there's no such thing as advanced. 
Now, um, having said that, let me give you an example. Uh, let's see, here we have the word, in this third example, we have the word contingent. Now, contingent is not one of our keywords, but if you were reading this and you're reading along and it said, led a large contingent of troops from Matamoros, what is a contingent? If you ask me to, to, to define that, I might not know how to define it um, because I, uh, <laughs> I'm i not a military person. But we also have troops. And, you know, most people realize that in the military, the people are in large groups. So a contingent is probably some form of a group. So that's how you can get the idea of the entire um, information without knowing the exact definition of each word. Also, the word like unbeknownst, that's not necessarily a very common word. So it's what some teachers would refer to as um, as advanced vocabulary. Now, how do we deal with vocabulary? Well, and let me refresh this page because I just added it to the course. We have vocabulary, the wonderful TOEFL vocabulary database by Give Me Some English. And there it is. It's a wonder to behold. <laughs> this one, this, this database, I, I made it a few years ago. It took me years to finish this whole thing and I'll show you why because there are over 5,000 words in this entire database boom boom look at all those links that I had to do holy cow so if if you're going through the course this is you had to split them up into three sections because the pages were getting too big so if you're going through the course and you come across a word which you don't know there's a really good chance that it's in this database. I don't know if the word contingent is in the database because it's not one of the, probably not one of the most common words. Um, con contingency, oh, I have that. Okay, good, I'll have to add contingent. So this is what happens when you click on the word. You click on the word in the database, it takes you to the word in the pronunciation portal, the Give Me Some English pronunciation portal. Contingency. For this word, the C is hard, uh, the O turns into a U schwa, the I is short, the G is soft, the E turns into an I schwa, the C is short, uh, the final Y is pronounced like the long letter E. What does all that mean? Well, um, this is the word spelled in the phonetic language. This is the word spelled phonetically. Contingency. 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 Notice also that the stress is on the second syllable. That's why it's in bold and in uh, capital letters. But what does the word mean? Well, just click there. Boom! Right there. Contingency. Uh, the quality of being contingent. Okay. Um, he read it. And that was the word in the text. Contingent. Uh, an event. No, that's not the event. Uh, that which falls in a division or a porting number. That doesn't make sense. Military. A quota of troops. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So what do they mean by quota? A quota of troops. A portion, part, or share. Um, a share or proportion assigned to each division. A prescribed number. A prescribed number. It's a prescribed number of troops. Oh my god. Did you see how we just learned something there? A contingent is a large number of troops. That's all. So that's a little side lesson there of how to deal with vocabulary. So let's go through that again. You click the word vocabulary. It takes you to the vocabulary database. A through E, F through Q, R through Z. Choose your letter. Come on. Find your, find your word in the list. Click on it. It takes you to the pronunciation. And if you click on the word in the pronunciation, it takes you to the Wiktionary page. This is the best online dictionary. Dictionary.com is not <laughs> this is good because it shows you the etymology where the word comes from it gives you a lot of extra information so i highly recommend this wikipedia maybe maybe not the best source of information but wiktionary is a good one so let's get rid of all these now uh okay that was tofu vocabulary vocabulary pronunciation database oh it's beautiful okay so that's how you find out about new vocabulary while you're taking the TOEFL excellence course now let's go back to the reason for this video though so the question stem now we're getting into one of the um one of the tricks which is also um leads to a master skill that you'll learn in the next lesson um the what is true about question you'll probably remember that from the previous video according to the paragraph what is true about gustav klimt and what do we remember about that is that 
when we have a question that says what is true about, it's a little bit more difficult to find the location of the answer. So um, that was one of the skills, one of the strategies is first finding the keywords and then finding the text, um, you know, where the answer is and trying to answer the thing. When you have, uh, when you have a what is true about or something like what can be said about, then you know that the answer could be anywhere in the passage. And then you have to go to the answer choices and find the keywords in those and sort of do the process of elimination. You know, um, using the keywords from each one of there, finding the answer. And so you have to do the process of elimination, you know, going one by one instead of with the sort of normal questions where you can find the keyword in this in the sentence, find the location of it and you can skip the rest. So that is one of the things that I added to the tricks and traps because, well, it can be a trap for your time, but it's also a trick that you can use to save time. Um, because if you get a question that asks you something like that, you know that you're going to have to immediately switch to the strategy of just going to the answer choices and uh, finding the keyword there, finding the keyword in the reading passage and sort of eliminating them one by one. Okay, so what about in the answer choices? Uh, the first one and the most common one, and this is probably the most common trick or trap in the the whole TOEFL reading section is using exact words or phrases in both the answer choice and the reading passage. Now these are actually subsets of this because what happens when they do use similar words or exact words is that a lot of times it has an opposite or altered meaning. Or they use similar words like uh, we have like the word unbeknownst um, and we have the word no well, those have the same root, so it's that's the key word, but it, the information is altered. It's not that he knew, didn't, you know, they said unbeknownst to the Texans. That has nothing to do with whether Jose de Uria knew the Texans or not. It's what the, Texan, what the Texians knew or didn't know. So we have a lot of um, examples of that throughout the entire reading section of using exact words or phrases uh, like built the temple. The Khmers could have built a temple, and they said here they built the temple, built the temple. Oh, maybe that's the answer. No, it's not. Um, and I explained a little bit about that one in the video. So this is the most common uh, trap in the reading section, is using similar or exact words or phrases that have an altered meaning, um, and you still have to check them out. Unless you get lucky and you find the answer exactly and you're 100% sure, then you don't need to check the rest of the ones. Just, you know, choose that answer and move on. But when you're looking for the keywords and matching the sentences up to try to find the correct answer, just be aware that this is a very common thing that they do. Is when they use those similar words or phrases, a lot of times they will change or alter the meaning. Um, so that's probably the most common one right there. All right, so a little disclaimer down here. Now, I put as many of, uh, I put all of the tricks and traps and the master skills that I know of um, into these courses. Well, specifically here about the tricks and traps. I put all of them that I ever come across into these courses. Uh, there's only a few on this one because those are the only ones that I've ever come across with this question type. But the makers of the exam are constantly trying to come up with new ways to make the, the exam a little bit more difficult for you because people learn how to. Um, how to take the exam, they get better at it, and uh, so they have to alter. So if you ever come across, or if you have come across something, uh, if you're one of those people that have done the test in the past, um, and you know of another way that they tried to fool you, um, definitely let me know and we'll add it uh, so that it doesn't happen to you again and it won't happen to anyone else. But that is basically the whole um, gist of the tricks and the traps for the factual information and detailed questions. And in the next lesson, we will learn about the master skills. Those are the skills that you need to, well, obviously to master this question type, but also a lot of those skills directly relate to uh, how to not fall into one of these traps. And of course, how to save time. So to save more of your time, we'll end the video now and we'll see you in the next lesson.